and welcome back. I have just finished a FaceTime lesson with a group of really lovely ladies from Missouri and I thought I would share with you some of the things that we had covered while I'm still thinking about it. Um, so they have extra help where some of those ladies have not been able to successfully weld or they wanted to have a bit of training and reminders and tips. So I'm going to take this opportunity and um, first off, I'm going to use a um, some of this gardening material twist tie so that you can see more clearly what a jump ring should, what we should do and where is a good weld. So here I was saying when you are, you should always have the seam in the middle of where your, your pliers hold, hold them flat, the pliers. And then when you twist, you're twisting, as you're twisting open, push inward, loop through the chain that you want to loop through the chain like this, and then close. And as you close, you want to meet the two parts meet, but you're pushing it together so that you, it's actually grinding it. That way, you know that there is going to be connection. Um, so that's one of the things first and foremost, and they wanted to know where is the best connection. So you have to have the ground and then the electrode, which is the needle. And they want to know, does it matter if you're pointing it from the top of the jump ring or from the side of the jump ring, like this side? versus this. So the answer to that is it does not matter because basically as long as the seam, as long as the two parts are touching together, when you weld on the spot, it should work. Doesn't matter because where. However, the thing is a few things need to happen. One, in your jump ring needs to be touching. Otherwise, if you if it's a gap like this and somehow both sides touch this it will just blow up your jump ring they'll go the gap will be bigger as the metal rolls backwards okay that happens very often now it doesn't matter which way it does not however I'm gonna pretend this is a, a magnified version of the electrode it does not matter however the electricity, the electricity goes through here. So if, if both sides are touching, it does not matter which way. However, what does matter is you don't want to touch from the side, like from the side of the electrode, the, the electrode because the electricity shoots from here. And when you do this, you'll still hear the tap, the click, click sound, and you think that it has welded, it snaps, but it is very, very weak and this will not last very long. So you don't want to do it like this. You want to do it this way or this way. So I'm going to, on this angle. So you want it this way or this way, but you want the tip to be touching perpendicularly. So like this. Um, so that was one of the questions. And another one is most people actually, sh they would not be the first. It is very hard to see through this, even though um, there is light hard as in, you were just not comfortable with it. And quite often the person is worried that they, they can't even see the seam. 
which is really true. It is hard. If you've done a good job of it, you won't be able to see the seam very clearly. So I'm going to use a, a, a jump ring to demonstrate what some of the tricks are that you could use. Okay. So one of the things that um, I find difficult in seeing the seam, despite having using my reading glasses or a, something that is lit so I can see it. I can feel where the jump ring closes. So what you can do is if each and every single time you are clipping the ground, you see where the ring is as you're holding, as you're holding onto your pliers, you look at it and you clip the ground right next to the ring exactly where the seam is every single time. So I'm going to demonstrate with this. If you know your alligator clip or now they have pliers that have that are connected to the ground, um, what you do, say it's like a, ply, a pair of pliers, is you clip it, you clip onto the ring exactly adjacent to it and you know where it is, but without touching the seam, because when it welds, you don't want to weld the pliers or the ground right to the point. But, so you don't want the stylus, the, the electro to touch your grounding clip, right on the grounding clip. So if every single time as you're practicing, you are clipping it right there, and so even if it's really shiny, you can't see it very well, you know, just from the position. So that is one trick. The other thing is, it's perfectly okay to use a permanent marker, like a Sharpie, and dab on the seam as you can see it. In that way, you can see it better and it'll show up much more clearly under the light if you need to do that. Um, so, and that, that can be erased with either an eraser or a um, microfiber brush as you're removing the oxidation. So those are some of the things um, that I think are worth talking about. The other thing I did cover, and this would be a good reminder, is that um, for fine link chains, especially if the wire gauge is less than 22, what happens is it is a little bit finer and if it's an area uh, link, so not as tight weave, it will stretch over time. But metal, unlike leather or cotton, a lot of the bracelets out there, um, that people are used to and they, they're used to it settling over time, um, metal shouldn't, with the exception of some airy links. And so what happens is, and it's sometimes over time when you pull on it, it does sag. Um, in that case, you just shorten it and re-weld. Much harder if it's too tight and you want to increase the size. So keeping in mind that it's, most of them are not gonna sag or stretch or settle over time, make sure that there is enough um, give and that it is comfortable for the customer. And have them test it with a mock-up using a jump ring before you cut the chain and make sure that they are comfortable. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that to be useful. I am a wholesaler of premium quality chains and findings, as well as the designer and distributor of AmoraCast. I'm going to leave more information about our components below, as well as a link to the Orion Micro Welder that I've used in this video.